So this is Bethany, and I'm Jeff, and this is the miracle of our marriage. So I was deployed in Iraq in 2005, um, and Christopher and I had become friends. Uh, I ended up being his squad leader, and uh, we fought alongside each other, and we worked alongside each other, became uh, really good friends. His relationship with his wife was a pretty awesome relationship. I, I didn't really know Bethany, um, but just you have a lot of time on the top of rooftops staring out into the desert in the middle of the night to talk, and so Christopher and I would talk quite a bit, and to see his relationship with his wife and how much he cared for her and how much um, it, it was a big deal. He was, it was something he was looking forward to when he got home, uh, that, that definitely changed something in me uh, because up until that time, um, uh, I, I really hadn't thought much about marriage, thought much about love, other than I was pretty sure it didn't exist. It's hard for me to talk about Christopher because people don't know our relationship or if they don't know our relationship, they tend to think that I'm making things up because he was so in love with me, but he was. He was and it was the world spun around me. And uh, so to have a little baby coming was just amazing. And so that was in August of 2004, we found out we were going to have a baby. And um, in December of 2004, we found out he was getting deployed to Iraq. Before he left, we were able to get an ultrasound and find out that we were having a girl. And he wanted to name her Ella. So July 28th, uh, we had an operation to go out to two small villages. Christopher always did a really good job of knowing what I needed to send over the radio before I even told him. Uh, he was a very proactive radio man. We, we could see the house and there's a couple of military age males that came out the back uh, carrying rocket, propelled grenade launcher and AK-47. So my squad and uh, myself and a couple of my squad mates, we engaged. Um, eventually we start pounding all the houses with with tanks. We get a couple of tanks to come in and they start shooting at the houses. Uh, but eventually it comes down to the infantrymen. We have to go in and make sure the enemy is, is dead. My squad got assigned with going in and taking care of uh, anybody left over in the, the rubble of this one house. I, I make sure that Christopher knows that even though he's supposed to be right behind me, he's going to be tailing Charlie. And I tell him, you're the only one I trust in the back. Never had a chance to tell him, but the, the reason I did that is because he's married and has a baby. Uh, the rest of us were all single guys, and uh, to me that just made a difference. By this time, my squad is, we're combat vets, and I'm just so proud of the way that they maneuver through that area. We searched so quickly, so rapidly, so to see pain and lines break off to go clear the houses, didn't think much of it because that's what they knew they were supposed to do. And I've actually taken my eyes off because that's the last room we're checking and I've kind of breathed that sigh of relief that we're done. And um, I just hear a cry and a gunshot and um, I whip my head around to see that Christopher's down. Bullets start coming towards our position and uh, we all squat down behind this wall we're behind and I just have this little pillar of rock. Uh, I should have probably gotten my head blown off about that moment. But we make several assaults on the room, um, one of which the guy actually throws a grenade out at us. Another time a bull attacks and tramples one of my men and we have to shoot that. Um, finally I get a tank to ram a hole in the wall and we jump in there, uh, able to finish the guy off and recover Christopher's body and he was mortally wounded, shot in the back of the head. Second platoon goes home that day, but we ended up losing two guys, two of our brothers. I was at my parents' house one day on July 28th, and uh, I was watching First Night, and it was the end of the movie where the king has died, and they send him out to sea, and the Marines knocked on my door. I remember looking out the window and thinking they probably had the wrong house, um, but I opened it, and just like in the movies, they said, we regret to inform you. And that's when life changed. <laughs> I 
the next morning, I think it was, I sent an email to Jeff and asked him, I think all I said was, can you tell me what happened? And left it at that. I went through the funeral and all of that. And uh, I just assumed that there was more. I knew that there was, I, this wasn't the end of my story, that this was probably the beginning of something else. And so I asked Jeff if we could continue an email relationship because I was so in touch with the Marines that I didn't want to be ostracized from them. And uh, it was pretty soon we realized there was something more to this relationship, I think, at least for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked him if he would come home to Ohio when he got back from Iraq and escort me to the ball because I really wanted to go, but I didn't want to go home. It was your idea, huh? It was my, all my idea. <laughs> so, um, I remember just kind of feeling a wonder at would God allow me to fall in love so quickly and being in the middle of the grieving process, it was hard to think about all of that, but I knew that there was something special there because Jeff knew and loved Christopher and um, I slept with him as much as you did. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by February we were engaged mm -hmm. and got married a few months later, moved to New Mexico, got pregnant again, <laughs> <laughs> kept getting pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and up, now I have four kids, and mm -hmm. you accepted Ella for, as your own. You were mm -hmm. the only daddy she's ever had. Yeah. And Atticus's first middle name is Christopher, so he's named after my first husband. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of guys would do that. <laughs> <laughs>